happy to um, take us on our next journey and welcome back Roberto Juarez, who you might remember if you joined us all the way at the beginning of our program about 20 or 21 hours ago where he uh, shared a session with us. And so Roberto, welcome back today on the officially World Industrial Design Day. Um, Roberto is an industrial designer based in El Salvador co-founder and creative director of Lero Studio that co-designs solutions for human development and companies' competitiveness. He is also the co-founder of ID Week based in El Salvador. Welcome. Thank you, Natalie, and thank you for this space again. I'm really happy to present somebody really special um, on the design scene of our countries. Um, and I'm speaking about El Salvador and Guatemala. This is Lula Capriel. Um, and uh, today we'll be talking a little bit of what she does and who she is, because it's amazing the work she's doing in, in Guatemala and how she's promoting um, traditional craft with uh, more contemporary design. So welcome, Lula. Thank you, Roberto. And very excited to be part of this uh, celebration for our Industrial Design International Day. So happy yes, to share um, with you. I hope you're having a, a great day celebrating. Uh, trust um, me, I do. I have. So tell us a little bit more about you, Lula. Please. Good. Well, um, let me start with uh, about uh, that I am a Guatemalan industrial designer who, and I born in the west of my country, being part of the indigenous Quiche ethnic group. And I think uh, that I'm pretty sure actually that from the beginning, the word diversity was a key in my development, not only as a professional, but also as a person. Um, also, uh, let me tell you that I am the creative director for 89 Studio, where we focus on generating value propositions, potential at the human, economic, and social level to strategy design. I could say that as a team, uh, our mission is to create this strategy design and marketing routes also to promote a natural balance of profitability and growth for uh, three important elements, um, people, companies, and also ecosystems. But I will say that the most important thing that we have as a team is our vision, which is transforming perspective, connections, and global lifestyles for sustainable development through design. So uh, today I'm going to share um, with you a little bit about what we um, do as a studio. And let me tell, uh, tell you about my country, talking about Guatemala, Guatemalan diversity, um, talking about this richness that we have is um, in somehow, um, sharing with you like this multiple cultural expression of our populations. As a country, we have a rich diversity, but not only for human, but also in ecological way. Uh, and just imagine, I don't know if you, well, I, I know that you already know my country and you will see that we are we have a tiny, um, um, what, uh, not a space, but yes, Area. just like, sorry. Yeah, small area. Or <laughs> exactly. So uh, for this small area, we have at least 23 kind of ethnic linguistic groups. So uh, we have this heritage also of handicrafts, uh, not only from few years ago, but from the beginning of our history. So as a designer working with this artisan sector has been and will always be for me, as a second school in many aspects. But I think the most interesting for me is to observe its cultural practices um, closely linked to nature. Um, I will have um, a few images that I want to share with you. So, yeah. yes. To show you um, what do I took when I say
did you found the option, Lula? Yeah, just here I have. I think there you already go. are seeing oh, my screen, picture. right? Yeah. So yeah, because what I want to to show share with you is also in somehow this richness through this kind of image that we have. Um, well, I was telling you that we have like this um, diversity heritage in handicrafts. And when I was talking at the beginning to say that I, I born in the West of my country, surrounded by nature. And I think at the beginning, I always be inspired by nature and by my culture. So let me share with you one of the most um, important poems that I have from the Quiche writer Humberto Acabal. And it say, and they pass through the sky again, the aquasanes follow the paths to the ancestors through in the air. They know that the root will never be erased. In Quiche um, language, it will say like, I always like to share this um, poem because it's a very Guatemalan way to show you this kind of richness that we are going to see in the handicrafts. So talking uh, a little bit about the history of these native tribes, they had always been an, a key activity to achieve the development that as a territory uh, we have. <clears throat> and I think it's one of the most brilliant um, things, um, treasures that, that we have. So um, you will see a different phrase, a phase right now that represents this richness and this also um, sector of my uh, of the activity uh, in in my country to promote the local economy development and various rural regions of the tourist the promotion and all as a country. So um, for us as a country, um, the this sector is. Um, when we talk about this sector, we talk about more than 1 million artisans in our population. And it's a sector leads by the 80% by women. When we um, see this rich nerds from government, we start to think about uh, new strategies to uh, work new kind of projects uh, not only with government, but also with the co international cooperation, and we start to or we start to work um, different new projects to to say how can we encourage them and um, increase their development. So we start to create like this. Um, project that we work and talking about the future and conservation that diverse knowledge uh, that our artisan sectors treasure. So we create a new contest uh, in a national contest with which name was Cacao. So this is the last project that we have been working as the studio with government and also um, international cooperation. And the uh, idea with this um, project is to share the knowledge for these uh, masters artisans to this new generation of designers. I think you have seen our process, right, Roberto? Because actually this project starts like two months ago, and it has been a huge challenge, but also it had been a huge opportunity for us, not only as a studio, but also as a Guatemalan people to um, watch 
in a very um, inside way, the richness that we have, the challenge that we have, um, this uh, work that we have to do as in those uh, creative industry for our country. <clears throat> talking about this kind of project is about, is talking about this new perspective that we want to share and we want to create for our future generation. Talk about the, um, um, well, actually, uh, let me say, tell you that this project, we work it with an um, Asian model now, knows it as a top one, one product, one, one town, one product. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you always know about this um, strategy, which means that each part of or territory of each country can uh, be specialized in one handicraft and to promote this, the territory through these um, artisans. So what's the goals that we are pursued with this kind of national projects? The first and the most important for us was to revalue the identity and specialization of territories. Also uh, merge the knowledge of masters craft, craftsmen and with the new generation of designs. And the last was to enhance craft creativities as a key element of development and growth of our country. So you can see here like the phases of this richness that I am share with you, that I am talking with you. Um, why is important diversity in this kind of project? For me, diversity is the, um, actually will be the key for the magic happens, not only inside with us, but also uh, in international exhibitions. So Cacao is the project that we start to work with very like, I could say that all the team was very proud when we start to create it and say, this has to be a huge platform where we can share uh, our proud about our history and our future as a creative industry uh, from Guatemala. Let me show you also one of the, um, the short video to show you how was the the key um, elements that we select for this proposal. That was cool, Lula. That's a promotional video looking for applications. Yeah. Well, actually, it, even with the image that we create for this um, event, we get inspired in this region that, that we have in the customers, indigenous customers uh, for the west of the, the west of the country. And and in a and I know that the applications are closed now, right? And you had more than a hundred uh, proposals submitted to the challenge. Which, I mean, the proposal submitted they were by teams already created, right? It's not like me as a designer I propose something and then you match with an artist and somewhere else. I mean, we need I need to have a a team, including a craft and a designer. Showing. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think one of the goals that we pursued with this project was the synergy, because uh, I don't know how it was in your country, but right now uh, we start to hear um, this idea about we are not going to keep this um, activity because I need to earn money. I mean, young people will start to say this with this handicraft um, 
uh, work. And as a government, they start to say, well, we cannot allow that this kind of heritage, uh, heritage get lost. So what we want to do with this event was to say, okay, so let's uh, come, uh, let's bring these um, artisan masters and made a synergy with the new generation of designers. So that was our first like um, um, requisito to Requirement. accept, yes, accept the, the project. And which part was harder to convince, Lula? It was the artisans to team up with a designer or it was for a designer to, to team up with a craftsman? I will say the artisans, uh, you know, but it was very interesting because at the beginning we start this kind of um, promotional tour when we start to explain them how does this event will work, the, the challenge, but also the awards. But we start to see like they didn't believe themselves like good enough. So when we start to talking like, come on, you are the you are the this strategy uh, person that we need in this event. So they start to say, okay, but I'm still have a little bit afraid to participate because I don't know nothing about design. I don't know nothing about what is a concept and was very interested because uh, we start to explain them. You already know a lot of about design and concept you have to teach us so i will say the that was the real challenge um let them see the um, pressure that they have in their hands nice so now what's the next step you have all the some uh, all the submitted proposals you go with a jury and then you select a winner or what's the yeah. process for what, I mean, this event is going to end until November. So we have four phases for it. The first one was the um, open call. This second will uh, be the most interesting uh, for us because it's when we're going to select, obviously, the um, teams that are, go that are going to go for this second phase. And they're going to start to work their product design through three months. So we are going to be with them. Uh, we have a huge um, team for uh, evaluators. So they are going to be help us uh, for a different lens like innovation, product design, marketing, international business. So the idea is not only to say to the artisans and designers to create this new uh, product, but also to be with them and increase the quality of the proposals. Nice. And at the end, I, I understand there's a, another prize for the for the winners to be featured on the Ibero-American Biennale of Design. Yeah, we create an alliance for work with them. And uh, because at the end of the day, what we want is to these winners will represent us with this proposal that they will um, present. So uh, the Ibero-American um, design is going to be one of our platform, international platforms where they are going to share their proposals. So practically they will be our creative ambassadors. Nice, that's an exciting challenge. I, will, I would love to have over here actually. <laughs> And, and tell me, what has been the biggest challenge so far in the in the competition? Like having people trusting each other, or having the the government on board, for example. What what's been the hardest part? More, more than to talk about the government, I will say the huge challenge is to, in a very romantic way, believe in ourselves because many times the creative industry. Uh, it's very good in what they do, but I will say it in some sometimes we don't believe enough in ourselves to sell sell this um, product, this idea, this strategy. 
so I think this is the real challenge to tell us that we have this value and we need to add this value to our country to talk about competitive and for talking about development. Yeah, and, and from, the, from, from the craft side of this challenge or the teams, um, do you have like a special point for them to bring up their tradition? Like, I, I believe it's like a mandatory thing to have obviously the process involved and maybe the materials, but what about the culture behind? Is that a, an extra point to, if they do that? More than an extra is one of the um, uh, strategy point in your proposal, because the idea to use uh, this is Asian strategy names uh, top one town, one product was to um, each proposal that you are, um, they are going to present us has to tell something about our cultural and about the, this diversity that we have as a country. So yes, we are um, right now, we are um, evaluate the proposals and the most important thing first is about talking about the teams. And the second one, it's talking about this concept design inspired in our diversity as a country. I see. And since you already started evaluating, can you tell us a little bit more of what you've seen so far? May I say? I, I don't know. <laughs> but I, 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 I can share you that there are so many interesting also, uh, I forgot to tell you that we have three categories for this event and is wood, textile and ceramic. So the idea is to have winners for each of these three categories. And so far, yes, we are so happy for what happens seen lately. Yeah, I think right. it's the only thing I can tell you so far. <laughs> But okay. you can stay tuned on our social media and uh, official website to see next week who is going to be for the second phase. Definitely. Where people can find more about this project you're promoting? Do you have uh, an Instagram? Yeah, we have Instagram account, which the name of Cacao Concurso, and also our website, like www.cacaoconcurso.com Nice, nice. Well, thank you, uh, Lula. And so we can close the session. How do you see yourself from 10 years from now? Um, still, as I see, I am... Um, I think that question I made to myself like 10 years ago, five years ago, but for answer you today, I could say that I see me in 10 years sharing Guatemalan knowledge and through design. I am a very uh, proud Guatemalan industrial design and I truly believe that our territory has a lot of potential and a lot of knowledge to share for create and for um, talking about uh, development. So uh, personally, you know that I also am a teacher. So that's one of the things that I truly love to do as an industrial designer too. So yeah, I see me sharing and also um, not only teaching, but also like be, uh, be on students also. For, for life. <laughs> Definitely, you'll leave a mark on them. And I, I got a new question about what you're talking. I mean, you, you, you were telling us that you, you come from, from a town of Guatemala, Mostenango. Yes. You grew up there and then you moved to the city and now you're working in the city, but also inside the country. But how, how do you see your hometown now when you come back to that town with more influence, uh, cultural influence from your ancestors, but you grew up with a different context. I mean, it's not that different, but definitely if you go to details, it is really different. How do you see now your hometown? 
I will choose one word for that and it's respect. You know, obviously when you grow up, you see very different your context. As I told you, uh, my context in Momostenango was a very surrounded by nature with my family, my friends. Um, and I didn't release that. I, that was my first school, my first inspired creative school in my life. So when I when uh, my parents decided to come to Guatemala City, obviously I started this process, um, academic process. Yeah. <laughs> so when you start to have this new perspective and you come back to your roots, you see it very different. And it happens because when I came back to Momostenango, I start to release the richness that we have, history, culture. So that's where I decided to say, well, I'm going to create a studio and I'm going to um, dedicate all my effort and my energy to work with, art with artisans and work with um, our history and our heritage to talking about the new uh, um, quality of life for them. Because uh, I think it's not a secret to talk about a very um, complex context in for these kind of territories in my country. So basically, your uniqueness from your background makes you more competitive in this context. Yeah, totally. Yes, I believe so. Nice. Well, thank you, Lula. We are just in time. I don't know if you have a final reflection on this topic to share with the attendees. Well, no, more than say thank you for this opportunity and to share a little bit about my country and the richness that we have in our cultural diversity. Yeah, we wait you all in Guatemala and in El Salvador, actually. We're really close. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very tiny territories, must say. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you, Lula. No, thank you, Roberto.